Hello, brothers and sisters. It's Paul here. Um, I have something to share with you that may very well be one of the hardest things I've ever shared, in my opinion. As I'm saying this, I'm holding my Bible because this is very serious. As Christians, we walk in our daily lives and we fail almost every day. God said it himself that we are not able to walk outside of this curse of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. We can only be covered by the blood of Christ to help us. It's the only way to the Father. John 14, 6. He's the way, the truth, and the light. And there's no other way to heaven, to the Father. I have been struggling with something for quite a while. And it's been very hard. And I keep it to myself, and I don't understand why God even loves me enough to share things. But like dreams and visions to do this ministry. I chug along, I do what I can in hopes of help, helping and edifying others. <clears throat> the other day, I asked God, how do you see me? How do you see me if Jesus wasn't in my life? And this was hands down the worst thing I've ever seen. I have a dream I could read, but it's, it's not even worth it. I've been trying to help somebody along <clears throat> who I know is also somebody who struggles with the flesh. And then I need to explain this so you understand where I'm coming from. I was somebody that worked out for years. I was a pro wrestler. I was working out, feeding the flesh constantly. When you're a person that works out and you're a physical person, it's all about the flesh. I was always trying to get bigger eating more protein, blah, blah, blah. I was feeding the flesh all those years without ever feeding my spirit. Well, while I did that without realizing it, I somewhere along the line gave legal right to the enemy to have me in that manner, I guess. So since becoming a Christian and repenting daily and finding my battles and overcoming my mountains. I've come to realize that I wasn't able to shake off this lust thing. It didn't matter how or what I did, which led to me asking God, how do you see me well, as somebody who's still struggling with this? So, and what I mean by that is, you know, say I'm watching TV or a movie or and they show like a beautiful woman, my mind just goes in a direction. All men suffer from this, but I'm trying to be right with God and I'm trying to overcome this. So when I ask God how he sees me, he showed me in a dream with the person that I'm trying to help come to God fully, to submit fully to God, to let go of her issues, suddenly God kept bringing me to the scripture that said, do not, you know, prick somebody else's eye if you have a log in yours. And I'll put these scriptures up. And I kept asking God, like, why are you continuously telling me this? You know, like, and I was aware of this problem and I was aware and I repented daily for it. And you know, I, anyway, I came across a video today of an ex-warlock who went into detail explaining something that I had never heard before. Yes, I know that w the battle is a flesh and blood. It's not a flesh and blood. Sorry, it is a flesh and blood, but it's of principalities that we can't see. That's Ephesians 6.12. And I put my armor gone on every day, and once in a blue moon I forget, but I thought I was doing exactly everything right. So I heard this ex-warlock turned Christian explain the way the enemy picks on us. So he gave an example of the arrow shot at us, and he said that with any legal rights, and I mean anything, 
if you haven't repented for it, and if you're still not finding joy in your life, that's because of an open door that you can't close because you have a legal right against you. So I've known about the courts of heaven for about four or five years, and I've presented myself many times, but you will not remove it if you don't know what it is. <clears throat> so this guy went on and on for a while about how they pick, and then he mentioned that portal, and he used the example of lust. He goes, if that is something you struggle with because you gave legal right to it, that is where all of the enemy will shoot their arrows, wherever it is, and it may take a month. Like he gave it as an example as they do it daily until finally that area gets so soft they can get in. And that might, that might be the day you're watching something that will make your mind go in that way and lead you to sin. That hit me very hard this morning when I saw this and I heard this. And I'm sharing this because I don't see anybody online completely admitting their faults. I see the odd one, you know, it's very rare. Nobody wants to admit their faults. Well, I'm admitting mine. For so many years, I was in, in um, walking in lust, walking in the flesh. I guess I gave my legal right to the enemy and I've been attacked in dreams. And that's another thing he talked about. If you see like an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend in your dream and you submit to them having like say sex in the dream, you've actually lost your garment. And he went into explaining what this was. We have a spiritual garment. And when it's on, the enemy can't touch us. When you do something in your dream, it's basically like if you fulfill the spiritual lust in your dream, you've given them legal rights. You've given the enemy the legal rights to attack you in the physical world. So I had never heard it quite explained that way. So he went on to explain, this blew my mind. Where I, where I live, we had a, a head pastor pass away. And all of his family, his uh, daughters and son-in-laws and everybody's teaching right now. And uh, there's a few of them that are just incredible. When I listen to them, I know they're Holy Spirit filled. When a few other ones speak, I don't feel it. And this warlock, ex-warlock, explained that. He goes, if you're living and walking in sin, and you're teaching, if that's the day you're teaching and you're not covered by your spiritual garment, you're actually allowing that, because it's free will, eh? You're listening to somebody who's walking in sin and you're allowing that, your free will is allowing that to come into you and attack you. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you have an entire garment on and you have one weed spot right there, that enemy sees it. Because the person talking that you gave your free will to, do you understand? You've, you've given it the right to attack you. So I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I got very, very convicted by the Holy Spirit. And as you can see by my eyes, I was weeping and crying and repenting to God about this. So, going back to the dream. When I asked God how he saw me, without my armor of God on, without my spiritual garment, as it's said in the Bible, I was in a room with the person I was testifying to. And I had red boils on my skin, as did that person. And a, there was a second person. I couldn't believe it. In my dream, I was absolutely shocked. And I woke up and I started weeping and crying to God. Is that how you see me? Is that how you see me? And the Holy Spirit calmed me down and said, that's how you would be if you didn't have me. So... That's my message today to tell you how serious repentance is. Find your weaknesses. Repent about them. Forgive everybody. Present yourself in the courts of heaven and get right with God. I am just a fellow brother sharing something that I'm dealing with. If I am wrong, Somehow, I am sorry and I'll repent for it. But for today, 
this is a very serious thing I'm sharing. And I think the Holy Spirit put it on me to share it with you guys. Because there are people, and I've seen them online, say, you should have no problems if you're in covered by the blood of Jesus. Well, you know what? You're not 24-7 with Jesus. Sometimes you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Sometimes you're talking to somebody who's opening a door of gossip. You know, sometimes somebody's hating on somebody. If you're there, you're opening that door. you got to understand how serious it is. Your free will is so serious. You allow anything sinful in your, in your, around you, you're going to lose your garment. And I knew this was true because there are days I go weak sometimes where I'm strong, strong, strong. Something happens, my mind goes where I'm in the presence of others that make me sin. And the next day I feel nothing but shame and I have to start all over again. And that's what we have to do. Why? Because this is a long walk and we have to endure till the end. And each of these little battles are like a personal tribulation. It's not by accident God says we have to endure until the end, until his return. I love you guys. This is for somebody that's listening to this. I love you guys. And I'm opening the door for personal ridicule from this, even putting this online. So God's using me today to possibly get something through your mind to understand this please open your mind your heart your spirit to this pray to have your eyes and ears spiritually open to hear the words that the holy spirit is saying to me to tell you this is so serious guys have a good day i love you bye